we've got Mark here. He'll be teaching us today. I give you full permission to send as many questions as you want. In fact, I want him full of so many questions that he just doesn't know what to do with himself. So do be proud mindsetters, get those questions in and let's get learning. So it says find the 12th term of the sequence which goes 4, 7, 10, 13. Now when you are doing this kind of question, the very first thing that you need to ascertain is, is this thing going to be arithmetic or is it going to be geometric? And that's really my focus tonight. How do I tell the difference and then what is the formula that I deal with? Now I just want to remind all of you at home, first term difference is always going to be arithmetic. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I just look in between each of these terms and I say, well, how am I going from one term to the next? You should see that I'm going up plus three, I'm going up plus three, I'm going up plus three. And so this pattern continues indefinitely. And so then we know that we have an arithmetic sequence. And arithmetic tells us that we have a constant difference, constant first difference. Okay, so let's write there the constant first difference and that constant first difference, which is my D is equal to 3. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the correct formula so that I can go and find the 12th term. And when I write up the formula, I just want to remind you at home of the different letters, what they stand for, so that you always substitute correctly into that formula. So let's check this formula. Remember, this is given on the matric formula sheet. So we've got Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 times D. You will notice first off that there is a T. Now the T tells me that I'm dealing with a term. Okay, and when we're talking about a term, we're talking about a sequence. I'm not talking about a sum. I'm not talking about a series. So I've got this term. Tn stands for the value. Okay, so this is a value. A, I'm sure all of you know, we can also write it sometimes as T1, which is the very first term of your sequence. N is your position. Now that is where are you in the sequence? The fifth term, the eighth term, the twelfth term. So we're looking at find the twelfth term. So N tells me where I am looking in the sequence. TN tells me the value at a position. So we must never confuse the two, but they're very closely linked. You can't talk about the one without the other. Okay, so N is a position. And again, we've spoken about D, and D is the difference between any two successive terms, and we call it the first difference. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find the value of the 12th term. So I'm going to go substitute. So Tn, I'm going to put a little 12, which is telling me I want the 12th term, is equal to A. I've forgotten what I had up there. So my A was 4, okay, plus n minus 1 and then my d was equal to 3 and so hopefully you see that I am going to go and solve okay I want to find the value of the 12th position but there are there are two unknowns at this stage so t12 and the n now you'll never solve for two unknowns so that means I have to have been given one of them so let's go back and say did they give me the 12th term or did they tell me the position and again, I'm trying to find the 12th term. So actually, they're saying n is equal to 12. So I can go and replace that with 12. Okay, so the 12th term is going to be 4 plus 12 minus 1. And many of you at home are saying, oh my word, why so slow, Joe? Well, of course I can go faster, but I just want everyone to see what I'm doing. So that is going to be 11. So I'm going to have 4 plus 11 times 3, which is 33, plus 4, which is 37. And so this answer over here is telling me that the 12th term has a value of 37. So we link the two together and that is my value. I'm going to dive into another question. But in this next question, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the nth term formula. Because quite often we ask to find the nth term formula or the general term. And so your teachers might teach you to do the nth term formula first and then you go and solve using the nth term formula. So let me put up a question. Okay, this was my homework for the week. I'm going to write up another sequence. And I've got a sequence which goes 6, 13, 20, and so on. And then I'm going to end at 76. And I'm wanting to know where in the sequence is 76. Okay, and if I just 
read through my question it says which term in the sequence has a value of 76 so again I know that I'm only focusing on arithmetic at this stage but what you need to do at home is you need to classify because you have three different sequences in matric you have the second difference which is quadratic which you well did last week but it still comes up in matric you have arithmetic which is the first difference and you have the geometric which I'm getting to now now so I go from one term to the next all right, and I say, okay, how am I going? I've gone up in seven. I've gone up in seven. Cool beans. First difference, it's the same. We know that it's arithmetic. And I write somewhere on the side, my D is equal to seven, and I've got an arithmetic sequence. Then I'm also going to go and write down over here. Let's get back to the white pen. So I say, well, Tn is A plus N minus one times D. I know my A. That is my first term. So I can go and put in the first term, which is then going to be 6 plus n minus 1. I know my difference, which is going to then be 7. Oopsie. And I know Tn. But now if you just wait a second at home and say, hey, what's going on? Why, why aren't you subbing in the Tn or the n? I'm just saying, just pause a little bit. Take a chill pill. Watch what I'm going to do. Instead of subbing in the n or the Tn, I'm going to multiply in. And so when I multiply n, I get 6 plus the 7n minus 7. And if I just take it down a little bit more, I'm now going to get 7n minus 1. Now, some of you might be thinking, what has he done? This over here is known as the nth term formula. Okay? Also sometimes known as the general term formula. But it's a beautiful formula. Because actually, I've written all the unknowns just in terms of the n, the position, and the value. So if you've got the value, you can solve for the position. If you've got the position, you can solve for the value. You don't have to solve like this at all. But when they do ask you for the nth term formula, all that you need to do is you need to substitute your a and your d. And once you put in the a and the d, you're just left with the n. All right, so now I'm going to go and solve. I've even forgotten my question. So they said, which term in the sequence has a value of 76? 76 is my value. So go and put in your 76 is equal to 7n minus 1. Take the 1 over. So I get 77 is equal to 7n. And if you divide both sides by 7, hopefully you'll see that n is equal to 11. All right. Second question down. One or two to go before we have a break. Hopefully it's all making sense and we're crystallizing your understanding. So you're going to start enjoying this. How are we going so far? Good, good. Okay. Excellent. So... I'm now going to go to my next question, and my next question is a bit of a nasty. And this nasty is now going to look at what happens when we, we get simultaneous equations and we're solving for two unknowns. But before I get there, I want to impress upon you the fact that almost every question, when we're given information, you should write in terms of A and D. So if I'm talking about an arithmetic sequence, and someone says to me that I've got some term Okay, let's actually write it and say the eighth term. I'm just going to write something over here. So if I'm saying the eighth term is equal to 50, I would like you to get in the habit of always saying, well, that would be A plus 7D. Think about what I've done and see if it makes sense. I'm going to give you another example. So if someone says to me the 20th term is equal to 30, I can write the 20th term in terms of A and D only. So if the 20th term is 30, that would be A plus 19D. That's important because we know that the arithmetic term formula is always A plus N minus 1D. And so we know that this N and that N are linked. So if I'm talking the 20th term, when I go to N minus 1 over here, I'm going to see 1 less. And if I'm talking the 8th term, n minus 1, I'm going to see 7d. And that's a very clever trick if you want to try and do this quickly. And you want to do it quickly so you can go and play with your girlfriend or something when you finish your maths homework. So, look at this question. I'm going to have to write down, it says, determine the arithmetic sequence. So I want to find out the arithmetic sequence. And what that means is I want to find the first term, the second term, and the third term. So I'm going to go and find the first, second, and third term. But they give me that the 21st term is equal to 170. And I know that the fifth term 
is equal to 122. Now I'm sure most of you at home now are saying, oh my word, I've seen these things, they are nasty with a capital N and a capital S D. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to try and unravel this thing and I'm going to show you my clever trick. Watch carefully because the setting out is important and then how I solve afterwards. So I said to you that if this is arithmetic and I've made it very clear at the beginning, the 21st term, so check this out, the 21st term is going to be A plus 20 lots of D. Always one less the number of D's because it's N minus 1 D. The fifth term okay, is going to be A plus 4D. You should recognize there are two unknowns. So there's an A and a D, A and a D. Two equations you're going to solve simultaneously. But now you're going to love this next trick, all right? What I do is I set them up beautifully. So I've deliberately set it out like this, where I've got the numbers on top, the A's on top, and the D's on top and I'm going to subtract down. This is the quickest way in this section. If you don't quite understand it, solve simultaneously in the way that your teachers taught you. But if you do understand, this is going to save time. So if I go and subtract down, so 170 minus 122 is what, 48. I go and subtract down, the A minus A disappears. The 20D minus 4D is 16D. And immediately I've got rid of my A. And I'm down to one unknown, so it's no longer simultaneous. And if you always solve like this by listing, then the A's will always cancel. Divide both sides by 3. Okay. And so if I divide by, um, sorry, divide both sides by 16, I got the answer in my head and went the wrong way. Divide both sides by 16 and you get an answer of 3. So I divide by 16 there, I divide by 16 there, and I've got my answer for D. Now you might say, okay, but Mark, we've got the D. What about the A? Where are we going to go get for A? We'll just sub it back. Okay, so if I go and sub it back, I have got, let's not lose my screen. So if I just put the D is 3 back into this equation, and again you could do it into any equation, I've got 122 is equal to A plus 4D, which is putting my 3 into there. So that's going to be 12. So when I take the 12 across, okay, I'm going to have 110. Now I'm almost there because the question said to me, please give me the first three terms. When they say find the sequence, you find the first three terms. So I know that my first term is going to be 110. Add your D, and my D was 3, so the next term is 113, and the next term is 116, and Bob's your auntie. If I've got the sequence, a third then 1x, and then 16 over 3, okay? And then I said that this is arithmetic. Go and solve for x. And so one of the callers or one of the people on the computer said, please can you show us again in a more systematic way how do we go and find out the common difference between terms? And that's what I want to really focus on here. So we're saying arithmetic has a constant first difference, which means the difference between any two terms is always the same. So for example, if I was going up 2, and then if I went up 7, if I wanted to make this arithmetic and I've gone up 5, then I would go to 12. And then I'd add up another 5 and I'd go to 17. And what I'd notice is I'm going up the same amount every time. Now that's very easy for us to see at home that we've gone up by 5, but generally speaking we say that the common difference okay, is always the difference between any two successive terms. So if I said take your second term and subtract your first term, when I subtract them I would say 7 minus 2 and that would be equal to 5. But in the same way I can take any two successive terms, I could say T4 minus T3. So long as I take a term afterwards and subtract the term before, if this gives me the same difference, then all that I've done is I've verified that it's arithmetic. So what I'm doing here is I'm showing you that I've got something arithmetic. If your examiner says working with the arithmetic sequence, that immediately means that that is true. So that means that the difference between any two successive terms is always the same. So I want to show you what I would do here. So let's go back to my question. Think about it and see if you can start this at home. I'm saying it's arithmetic. 
And because it is arithmetic, we know that it has a constant first difference. So what that means is I can go and say, you know what? The difference is T2 minus T1. And so if I go and say T2 minus T1, that is just X minus a third. But I could have also said that the difference is T3 minus T2. So I could say, well, that's T3 minus T2. And that T3 minus T2 is going to be 16 over 3 minus X. And that 2 is the difference. But now, here's the big thing. Because it's arithmetic, the examiner is telling us, by using the words arithmetic, that there is a constant difference. That difference is always the same between successive terms, which means then that I can equate these. So because there is a common difference, that means that I can equate that to that. And thereby, solving for x. So let's just go down a little bit, Shke. So I know that I can go and say that x minus a third is equal to 16 over 3 minus x. And so I can just go and solve it. And look, I made this up in the break, so it's not going to work out beautifully, but it's not so much the final answer. It's all about the process and realizing that arithmetic means a constant difference, and then I'm just going to go and use that to solve for some unknowns. Take the x's to the one side, so I'm going to end up getting 2x is equal to, I'll just show an extra step so you can see where I'm at, plus then a third, and that there is equal to 17 over 3. And that is 2x. And so then when I go and solve and I halve both sides, because I want to get to a single x, so we can just say times by a half to both sides, and I'll get 17 over 6. Now that's not a nice answer, but it works out. And we grade 12, and we've got to deal with the fact that we're going to have some fractions. All right, so those people that asked how would I use the common difference, and would we use the notation where D is equal to, if I've got T11, well, T11 minus T10. That will always be true for an arithmetic. That's how an arithmetic is defined. So hopefully I've answered that question. Geometric, okay, says to us that we have a common ratio. Now, you might or might not remember what we mean by ratio. Some students on the computer were saying, please, Mark, help us. What is a, a quadratic compared to an arithmetic compared to a geometric? Quadratic means that the second difference is the same. So you need to create a first difference, go to the next line. And when you create the second difference between terms, it's the same. If you go to the first line and there's a constant first difference, arithmetic. So let me give you an example. I'm going to use the example that I want to play with now. So we'll dive into a question. If I'm going from one term to the next, and so the next term there would be 4, if I said to you what's going on, if you subtracted, you say, you know what, I've gone down 16. And you know what, I've, I've gone down 8. And there I've gone down 4. And what we notice is that it is not constant. If I just go down one little step over here, okay, from minus 16 to minus 8, you would have actually plused 8. And if I go from there to there, you would have plused 4. So the point that I'm trying to make is that if you have the same thing on the first line, that's a constant first difference, that's arithmetic. If on the second line it's the same thing, a constant difference between terms on the second line, that is a constant second difference. And that will be quadratic. But this is neither. So what we need to do then is say, could I be multiplying from one term to the next? And that's where we're going to actually get our geometric. So I just want to rub out what I've got over here. So there we go. So for that caller, hopefully we've answered that question. I am now going to look at this thing and say, hmm, could I have been timesing or could I have been dividing? Or could I have been doing something? And hopefully you'll say, you know what? You're halving. From one term to the next, you're actually halving. So you're multiplying by a half to each term. And some others will say, well, we're actually dividing by two. And when you are actually getting what we call this constant or common ratio from one term to the next, that's when we have geometric. And that R value, so I would say over here, R is a half. 
R is the value that I'm going to multiply to each term. So if I say a half of 32, I get 16. I've multiplied by one half. And if I multiply 16 by half, I've got to 8. And if I multiply 8 by half, I get to 4. And so I keep going like that. So now I'm just going to try and define it a little bit better so that we can look at a general rule. And so we say the common ratio between any two terms says to us, well, take the term after and divide by the term before because that will tell me what you've multiplied by. So if I take term 2 and I divide it by term 1, you see that that is a half. But in the same way, I could have said, let's take term 4. All right, so let's go down a little bit. So if I said R is also term 4 divided by term 3. And notice there that I'm taking one term and dividing by the term before it. So I just need to see who is term 4. Term 4 is 4 divided by 8. And again, I get to half. So what we're looking at here is a geometric sequence. We've got a constant ratio between any successive terms. And what we're doing, instead of adding or subtracting, we're multiplying by something. And many of you will say, oh, but Mark, I could have been dividing by 2. Well, dividing something by 2 is actually the same as multiplying by 1 half. So in this section, we tend to say, what are we multiplying by? But if you're going smaller, you're multiplying by bottom heavy, okay? So we make a JLO fraction, make sure it's bottom heavy, and we start getting something a little bit smaller. Now, I'm going to get to my question, because I started writing it, but we want to unravel it just a little bit, okay? So, TN is equal to A times R to the power of N minus 1. That is the general formula for a geometric sequence. And again, this is given on the metric formula sheet. So you don't have to memorize it, but I think if you've practiced enough, you should know this thing off by heart. So if I said to you, what is the 10th term? You would then say, well, the 10th term is equal to A times R to the 10 minus 1, which is 9. And again, you notice this little relationship between the term value at a position and when I put that in there. All right, so I just know that I've got that. Now I'm going to get to my question. So my question, which I started off with, says, if I've got the sequence 32, 16, 8, and so on, I'm going to say, find the eighth term of the sequence. The examiner doesn't have to ask or tell you or mention anything about geometric. You need to recognize. You need to notice that as I go from one term to the next, I'm halving. My R is a half. What am I multiplying from one to get to the next term? So I'm multiplying by one half. And so I need to find out the eighth term. So let's go and work this out. Tn is going to be A, which is my 32, multiplied by R, okay, which is going to be 1 half to the power of N minus 1. Now I know, because I'm finding the eighth term, I want to know when N is 8. So I'm going to go and say, well, I want T8, which then is going to be 32 multiplied by 1 half, to the 8 minus 1, which takes me to 7. And it's at this stage that you can use a calculator, but I want to show you that if you have a good understanding of your exponent laws, you can get to the answer very quickly. So I'm just going to play around with this 32 is going to be 2 to the 5. If I take 1 to the power of 7, that's just 1. 2 to the power of 7 is just 2 to the power of 7. And when I go and multiply out, I'm getting 2 to the 5 over 2 to the 7. Remember that that is 1 over 2 squared. And that's a quarter. Okay. So the eighth term is equal to 1 quarter. And that is our first intro into playing with a geometric sequence, knowing that there is a constant ratio from one term to the next, and remembering that there is a very specific formula when I'm dealing with a geometric sequence. Which term... See, I don't want to get, you know, your groove. You've got your groove on. I've got my groove on. You do. 5, 15, 45, blah, 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 has a value of 3,645. Hmm. 
think carefully. Okay, so let's look at this again. Which term in the sequence, so it goes 5, 15, 45, has a value of 3,645. When I'm saying which term, I've got the value. That is the value of Tn. So when I say which term, I'm trying to say where in the sequence, what is your value of n? So I'm trying to solve the n part. You can play around, you can look at all of this, but things should start jumping out. When I look, I say, that went up by 10. Oopsie. If I went there, that's gone up by 10. Hang on. Now I've gone up 30. It's not a constant first difference, so it's not going to be arithmetic. So then I'm going to look and say, could I be multiplying one term to the next to possibly get geometric? And just to help the purists at home, okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say T2 divided by T1. So I'm going to get 15 over 5, and I get 3. And I'm going to say, let's just take T3 divided by T2. And what I get is I get 45 divided by 15, and that is equal to 3. And then I know it's not a constant difference, it's a constant ratio. That tells me what I've multiplied each term by to get the next successive term. So look, 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 3 is 45, and then I'm going to go and solve. Now for those viewers that watched last week, and we want you to watch every week, hopefully you remember that I did something using logs. So you know what, I'm going to show you how you can use logs with this question and if you remember, logs help us to solve for nasty exponents. And we're going to create exponents because this is geometric. So let's chuck it in the formula and let's just see what we get. So I know that my, my Tn is going to be A times R to the power of N minus 1. Now let's put in all the things that we do know. So I know that the first term is 5. So I'm going to substitute that in just now. And it's a good idea to try and go through your sequence and to say, whatever I can get from it, let's sub in. I also know that my R is going to be 3. And then I know finally that I'm trying to find a sequence that would take me to 3, 6, 4, 5. And so that should leave me with one unknown in the equation. And that one unknown is going to be N. So sub everything in and trust yourself that you're going to get to the answer. So Tn is 3645. 3645 is equal to my A, which is then going to be 5 times by 3 to the power of n minus 1. This piece I want to keep on its own for now because that's got a power and I can't unravel it. And please don't ever multiply the 5 into the 3 because there is an exponent. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and divide by the 5. So I'm going to go and write 3, 6, 4, 5, and I'm dividing that there by 5, okay, and then over there is going to be 3 to the power of n minus 1, and when I go and divide this, I'm getting 729 is 3 to the power of n minus 1. Now many of you at home will say, oh, oh, pick me, pick me, I know what 3 to a power is to give me 729, but just to remind you of logs, the logs help us to solve for a nasty exponent. And if you remember me ranting on and on and on last week, I said the base becomes the base. When you're changing exponential to log form, I say that the base becomes the base. So I write the log. This 3 is the base. So I'd write the base 3 of 729. And I know that that is n minus 1. And this is where I go and get my trusty friend. So I pull up my calculator. I'm going to press log, and so my base is 3. I go inside, and I press 729. And remember what the log is doing is we're saying, what must 3 be raised to to give me 729? And so when I press equals, I get 6. Cool, beans. Okay. So I know that 6, oopsie, 6 is going to be equal to n minus 1. Take the 1 over and 7 is equal to n. And so we know that the seventh term of this geometric sequence has a value of 3, 6, 4, 5. Okay. Bye, guys. See you next week.